Right, it's Gadget UK here again. Uh, this is a follow-on to the GameCube that I couldn't repair, if you remember. In the previous video, we had this one, checked out a few things on it. The power supply was okay. I worked out where the voltages and things and what voltages were supposed to be there. Um, we tested out the uh, DVD. Well, it's not really a full DVD, although it will play full DVD-sized discs, actually. You can modify the tops of these to do that. I think Brian uh, beeps. 73's done that to one of his, um, but yeah, the DVD unit was working okay, but it just wasn't booting. Now, after I uploaded that video, I started uh, looking at um, some of the stuff online. There are some partial, uh, well, there's lots of technical information out there. I was going to say schematics. There aren't really any schematics, I don't think, but there's lots of information about uh, some of the internals of this system and one thing that I started looking at was the BIOS because I couldn't quite work out where the BIOS was at one point I was considering maybe it was embedded within the CPU but I don't think it is there's a real-time clock chip on there uh, I forget uh, it's just down near the, the area that was damaged actually where the uh, corrosion was so I'm gonna reinspect there just to make sure I didn't miss any uh, traces and things around that area but the thought that that chip could be faulty the RTC chip that contains the let's say the real-time clock but also the BIOS and I'm guessing it's some sort of serial interface that it perhaps uses uh, you know to feed that to the CPU there so in the meantime I ordered this one a second one uh, now we'll test this first, I think, just to see what state this is in. I'm hoping this will boot at least. So, I mean, there's nothing lost here. If this boots, but we can't get this one booting, we can take the drive out of this one, stick it in that one, and I'm guessing everything will be uh, sweet. So we should be able to repair at least one within this video here. But I'm hoping that we might just, you know, if we remove that uh, BIOS there and swap the one over from this, this might boot if we're super lucky. At least we then know what the fault is. Uh, still only going to have one of these fixed, but at least I've got something to go on there. I could maybe then investigate uh, how that BIOS works and see if there's any way I could create something to replace the BIOS with. So we'll start by connecting this up. So we've got the power there. You can see that's come straight on actually. Switch that off. And the AV cable here. It's uh, got the digital one there as well, which is uh, useful. Because you can get adapters for these now, I think, where you plug something into the digital thing there, you get HDMI out. But anyway, I might look at one of those at some point. And if you want to know more about the HDMI side, check out Modern Vintage Gamers channel. Um, because he's done uh, a few videos actually on those. So that's a good sign, it's uh, powering up. Let me just plug a controller in. And the reason we're seeing that screen is because uh, the uh, battery will have uh, discharged. So it came up there saying uh, you must set the calendar options first, so let's do that. Look at the year there, 2090. <laughs> yeah, I'm not bothered about the exact time and date, let's just set the year so that that's okay. Finish. So the disc that was already inside was Zelda Wind Waker. And you can see that's pretty scratched up actually, that needs resurfacing. So trying it with uh, my Resident Evil Zero. Yeah, it's not doing anything, is it? I'm confused by that LED actually because yeah, you see this this was on originally when I first switched it on. This lit. I think that's the power LED, but it might not be. It might be the drive access LED. It's just weird how the first time we switched it on that came on, and now it's not on. And it's spinning, so yeah, it's having a go at trying to read the disc. But it's not seeing the disc, so uh, yeah, it's going to be a drive problem on this one. So before I tear this down, I'm just going to uh, get some IPA on a cotton bud there and uh, gently rub the lens there. Uh, and this is different to floppy heads, obviously, where you've got to put lots of pressure on these. You don't want to, you want to put the minimal amount of pressure there because there are tiny little coils on this part of the servos there that hold that uh, lens and move it for focus and tracking adjustments so yeah the the less you know the least you stress those coils out the better uh, so let's give that a try yeah still saying no disc so we'll tear these down now I've shown in the previous video how to tear these apart and stuff so I'm not going to cover all that we'll just strip it right down so I got the screws out from underneath, same uh, screwdriver as an N64, Super Nintendo, etc. And much to my horror, <laughs> look at the state of this. It's another corrosion job, that's why the LED went out. There's some weird stuff going on here, can you say, oh my god, this is worse than the other one. 
is horrendous. So, uh, yeah, all the clip from off here. Oh my goodness. What is it with these and corrosion? I suspect this has been got out of a skip or something. Yeah, someone's probably lobbed it out and then the bin men, you know, it's, someone's reclaimed it. Look at the rust on there. Good God. I mean, the main thing is this one's booting, so at least if this has got some sort of... Uh, and I think this will, this one will hopefully have a good chance of being repairable because um, it's booting. <laughs> it's powering up. If anything, we're going to have a problem with the drive, maybe a problem with the power supply. That LED not being lit is worrying me a little bit. You know, I mean, look at that screw there. It's mega corroded. It's a miracle this thing's even booting, to be honest, actually. Uh, how does that come out? Screw there. Look at that! Oh my goodness! How is this working? How is this working? Right, well I've got all the screws uh, from around the edge here and the one small ones down here. I mean, you can see how bad they are. Every one of them is like that. Horrendous. So if we just lift the drive out... Yeah, that's how it's working. Is You know, the, the design is quite well here if you look at it. The ground you know that goes around the edge here is sort of fairly tight which has meant that the corrosion stayed off the main PCB although we might have a little bit down here around that area I'm not sure I mean look how bad this is here it's terrible so I think the next thing we'll do is strip the other one down and borrow the drive and just plug the drive on here and just see if it then works as a functioning system but I will be taking this board out cleaning up all this shielding I do worry what the state of the regulator board is down there actually because you know you can see a lot of corrosion um just me the camera you can see a lot of corrosion here kind of suggests that a load of moisture might have gone down there and that might be why that led is not coming on or something maybe we've got some power supply uh issue as well on this board but you know it's not entirely uh corrosion free here there are some bits of corrosion around there so just booting it without a drive yeah it's still working Although, if I just leave this, you'll see it says an error has occurred. Now, that may well be because the drive's not there. I just don't remember seeing mine behave that way in the previous video when we tested without a drive. Maybe it did. Maybe I'm just forgetting. So, I'll strip the other one down and we'll try the drive on this one. So, remember, this one had a good drive because we tested the drive on my working uh, GameCube. But, uh, obviously, a dead motherboard. And the power supply was okay on this one as well. So let's uh, see if we can clip the drive off. There we go. Yeah, and if you remember in the previous video, we had some corrosion around here, which I cleaned up and fixed. Anyway, we'll put that one to the side. So let's now clip that onto there. Now that's interesting, because I'm sure this drive worked fine on the other GameCube. So it could suggest the power supply is an issue on this one as well. Unless there's some motherboard damage or something there, I don't know. Maybe a bad connection on the uh, drive connector. Right, so what I did there is I just cleaned the uh, laser lens. You probably can't see from here, but it was kind of, it looked cloudy. And it's because it's, it's cold in this room here, it uh, got moisture or something on it. Uh, so I cleaned it and then it booted okay. So I've put a controller in, let's just give it a try. Now I'm using the uh, controller uh, PCB there from the, the other one, the purple one actually, and I'll show you the LEDs lit, so obviously, you know, corrosion on the other board, uh, sorry, I need to hold the thing down, don't I, Hang on, let's do that again, I need to hold the switch down, you know, the lid switch, there we go, right, so it's spinning the disc, um, yeah, so the, on the other controller PCB, the thing that has the LED, something's interfering with that LED on there, that's why the LED stopped working. I mean, it could be that the LED's burnt out, but I'm inclined to think it's probably corrosion. So let's just do continue without saving. And just see if this uh, starts to load. I mean, it should do. We did test this drive on the other GameCube in a previous video. I'm sure it worked. Yeah, it's working fine. Let's just wait for a cut scene or something, because that's going to be uh, you know, a clue to how healthy that laser is. Sweet. It doesn't sound to be struggling, you know, I mean that's loaded pretty quick there. As you can see, that's worked fine. Yeah, and you can see the LED light in there, so, you know, let's like say the corrosion around here 
could have caused the issue with the LED. In fact, it's the ribbon. Can you see that? Look at that ribbon. It's similar to that last one where, you know, it's all tarnished here, but I can clean that up. I might just do that first, actually, just to make sure this is working. So I'll start by just going over this with a cotton, but actually we'll just try and go over all of the PCB here to clean any contaminants off it. I'll get the toothbrush uh, onto this as well in a second. It'll help get rid of any strands of cotton that I managed to attach to the solder points and things here. But also it'll get in between the connections and things as well. The battery probably needs uh, replacing on this. I and mean, it looks alright, I think the, the contact's just a bit corroded there. The battery kind of looks okay. So we'll get the toothbrush uh, onto this now. And then we'll carefully just uh, move the ribbon out of the way and brush the uh, IPA down this way. Let's just use the fiberglass pen on a few bits here, perhaps where we see corrosion. I mean, it's, that's not going to make any difference, I don't think. The solder's kind of gone weird there on that bit of the ground. But nevertheless, we can uh, have a go. Now the reset switch was working, I tested that actually, so despite the corrosion that's on there, that switch is actually working. I'm just using the wire brush initially here to get the large bits of uh, corrosion off, and then I'll go over it with the fiberglass pen. You can see what a difference that's making actually on the top there. It's got that rust off. Yeah, so still a little bit dirty, but you can see the corrosion has uh, come off that with uh, just using the, the you know the wire brush and the fiberglass uh, pen there. Um, as I say, I'll get some contact cleaner in there. Again with the fiberglass uh, pen, super carefully, and then we'll plug it back in and uh, give it another try. Yeah, that's not too bad now. Let's give that a go. So we'll just uh, plug it in. It's uh, not the easiest thing to get these back in, actually. There we go. And uh, let's just let's just switch it on. Yay, LED back. So yeah, that was all that was wrong with that. So let's just carefully lift the board out. We'll look on the underside. Again, pretty clean. It's just the very edges down here where the corrosion started to leak. So at least we've got a good motherboard there. I mean, in the worst case, I could just put this board into the other GameCube there. So then the shielding should just lift off. Uh, yeah, it looks like we're lucky there. Can you see corrosion? It's gone in, it's gone to the shield and it's leaked down here on the underside, but the regulator board looks untouched. There might just be the odd particle on there that needs dealing with. Anyway, we can deal with all that cleanup uh, work later. This is the chip I was interested in actually, um, the real-time clock chip here because this contains the BIOS as well, so I'm going to uh, desolder that, and you can see, can you see the corrosion around it? It needs to come off there anyway, I think, as part of the clean-up work. So yeah, I'll, uh, I'll clean up one with some cotton buds around here first, then we'll remove this with hot air, take the one off the other board and swap them over, and just see whether the other one springs to life. It'd be uh, brilliant if it did. I suspect on the other one it's probably not going to be that, but we should rule it out. It could be the clock chip, we could do that as well, we could swap that over. My scope's not fast enough to uh, uh, scope this uh, clocks on this unfortunately um, but you know if it's not those it's going to be well I mean it could be this here as well we've got a chip there we could swap over but uh, assuming it's it's not one of those things it's uh, on that other board it's going to be either the CPU GPU or the RAM here and it's all BGA mounted so it's kind of out the realms of my capability at the moment I've not really got the right hardware to uh, do something like that so what is it with these game cubes and corrosion? I'm, I'm guessing it's because of the low value that people associate with these. This is the real shame, you know. And this, I see the same thing sort of happening with the PlayStation One as well, which surprises me a little bit because I would think that the PlayStation One, in fact, it is. It's starting to become highly collectible now. People are starting to go out there and buy PS Ones, but there's still quite a few of them. Uh, you see on eBay that are in a, you know, a really uh, poor state of uh, repair kind of thing, you know. They've not been looked after well at all. And if you compare some of the older systems, you know, older games machines, consoles and computers to some of these new ones, they've stood the test of time. You know, you look at C64s and VICs and BBCs and Spectrums and Amstrads and stuff and they're... Uh, 
for the most part in pretty good condition generally even though they've been traveling around the world you know and moved from location to location on you know numerous occasion things you know been stuck in lofts and barns and attics and all that sort of stuff uh, and they still work and they still for the most part in one piece and still look almost as good as the day they were manufactured but you look at Wii's they've been thrown around and they're scratched up and beaten up and most of them don't work and you know they've just uh, we seem to have gone into an era of disposable hardware all this BGA stuff makes them hard to work on and so just cleaning around this gently with cotton buds I thought what's that black bit there have we just lost a component I inspected closely and we do we've lost I forget where it is now I can't see it I think there's a resistor or something there and I think that's what this is here so the corrosion has just uh, made the you know solder points on that go bad so I'll try and uh, reclaim that if I can I'm gonna go and get a bit of tape actually in fact I've got a bit of captain tape here I'm gonna stick it to the underside of this captain tape and then we'll try and clean it up and uh, refit it can you see that <laughs> look how small that is looks like a tiny piece of salt or something it's really super small that inspect with magnification while you're doing it because that's the sort of thing you could easily miss and just uh, think of it as a piece of dirt because that's what I thought um, I think it's for the charge circuit there so I don't think that's going to cause any huge problems I'll uh, go and plug this in in a minute and just try it now finish cleaning around there just to see how it's behaving without that and there we go, as expected, it's working all right without the resistor because it's just on the charge circuit. The worst case is if that resistor can't be uh, you know, cleaned up and refitted, I can just measure the one on the other board and uh, find a replacement. You know, we'll borrow the one from the other board if we can't get the other board working. Yeah, I'd also need to resolder the uh, clock crystal here, you know, for the real-time clock. That's just going to be, what is it, 32 kilohertz or whatever it is. I forget the exact frequency, I'll stick it up uh, there. Um, but So we can swap that out. But I'm going to remove that next. I'll get a piece of captain tape over these components here just to protect them. And I'll just use hot air to remove that. Oof. Yeah, there we go. Off. It kind of went uh, quite quickly, that actually. It wasn't moving at all, and then suddenly it just went. So we'll just very carefully put that onto the ESD mat. So this is the other board, and whilst I'm doing this, a thought has just crossed my mind. Um, now if you think back to when these chips are used in things like the PS3 and the Xbox and stuff, this uh, signature, you know, I'm just wondering if the um, BIOS is linked to the CPU and the GPU in any, any kind of way. Uh, that's possible. Um, well, we'll know at the end of this video, because I, I think what I'll do is I'll swap them around entirely. But then I might have to swap them back <laughs> if neither of them work afterwards. Um, so we'll find out one way or the other. So there we go, the BIOS is removed from the, this board that doesn't boot black screen. So I'll clean up these pads with some uh, flux and desolder braid and we'll get the one off the uh, black GameCube on there. So I've got some flux on there, I'll leave the caps and tape in place. It just makes it a bit easier. Uh, sorry, it's very hard to do this. It's so small. Super small. Yeah, I don't really want to be that way. I want to sort of go sideways. You should always try and go in the direction that the pad is the longest on the PCB. Because the pad will, uh, you know, it's got more grip. It's got more support on the board in its length uh, orientation that way. So there we go. I've removed the solder and cleaned up. That looks okay. I don't see any damage. So I'll clean the underside of the pins on the old chip from the black PCB and uh, you know the black GameCube PCB and we'll get that one on here. I need to try and uh, flow one pin, it's going to move this, I know it is. Add some crazy amount of solder onto the tip and, and we'll just get a crazy blob of solder on one side if we can. Is that joined? Uh, and then the same thing on uh, the other side. Please don't move. So I've anchored either corner there. I just now need to get some flux on and uh, drag solder it. I'm not going to show you that. It's super easy to do. I've covered it in a lot of the Neo Geo MVS videos I've done. The chip is not a sort of dissimilar size to some of the chips you get on those boards. So there we go. There's our chip soldered back on. I'm going to go and give this a try. I'm curious to see. Will it work? I doubt it. I seriously doubt it. 
So I'll just power it on. Same thing, no video. Video's gone. Exactly the same as it was in the previous video. You kind of get video and then you lose it. It's like it's had a crash or something. So all is not lost in terms of the uh, learning process here because now we've got the other BIOS on this one, the other real-time clock chip. I'll just test this. Now in theory, now in theory you should have the heat sinks on there, but just for a split second or two, it's uh, not a problem testing them this way, actually without the heat sink on there. You know, they don't go instantly like 200 degrees or something, it, that doesn't happen. So let's switch this on and see what happens now. Oh yes, switch that off. So it would seem that, uh, yeah, well we know that that chip is not the fault on the other one. So yeah, I mean there's other stuff I could swap out. There's some of these smaller chips here. There's the uh, clock chip here. I think someone asked me about that little chip there, U11, in one of my uh, recent videos. I think they were trying to source one from somewhere. I mean, the thing is, the reason I, you know, I considered swapping the, uh, the chip here is because it kind of makes sense, you know, BIOS related, but just continuously randomly swapping chips, it's, you know, you're never going to get anywhere with it generally, but maybe I should just swap the uh, clock chip as well just to, to rule that out. So back over to the board that works, you can just about see we've got a corroded pin there, so I've just cleaned that up with the fiberglass pen and the scratch tool here. Going to get a bit of flux on and reflow that. Um, you can clean the inside here just by pushing a piece of uh, folded sandpaper in and out there, because obviously some of these are going to be a bit corroded on that side. But this one works, you know, you can see where I refitted the chip there, so that looks alright. Um, I've cleaned up the uh, pads here, can you see that? Exposed copper, so I've got some flux on there. I'm going to try and clean the uh, components up, that's going to be super hard, it's stuck to a piece of tape at the moment. And then we'll have a go at fitting it. Uh, and then I'm going to measure, I'm going to do some connectivity tests around this area here versus the other board, because this is where the corrosion was on the other board, and obviously that one's not working. You never know, there might be something different there that I can learn just by you know testing in resistance mode, measuring ac across uh, each of the components, and uh, checking some of the traces between the two boards. Yeah, I'm not sure if the camcorder cut that off or not, but so yeah, just a component on a piece of sandpaper like that, with a piece of sandpaper on top, and you can see the contacts look super shiny. So you're on a macro, I've got to be super careful not to lose this, but can you see now? That was all just one colour before, you couldn't see the contacts, and on the underside as well, it's uh, nice and silver there. So I still haven't swapped the clock chip, but I mean, I've been measuring voltages and comparing resistances between these boards and things of various places. You know, for example, you can measure across these caps here uh, in resistance mode, and determine whether you've got a short and stuff like that, whether even whether you've got a, a, a change in resistance there, but they're identical, they're absolutely identical. So, uh, yeah, and everything measures okay on the connection up here, you know, the ribbon thing, all the voltages are identical. Um, so, the other thing that crossed my mind on this uh, original uh, board here, you know, the one that doesn't work at all, is there were a lot of corrosion around here, and I wonder if some corrosion's got under these uh, things here and shorting out something to ground. Could be a data bus connection or something. So. I'm going to try and remove these, I'll see how easy they are, they don't look that difficult, it's just the uh, anchor points that might absorb a bit of heat there. We'll remove one and we'll just have a look underneath, there's nothing to lose. So I removed the controller ports as you can see, you've got to be quite careful. On the other one, one of the pins, the tip just snapped off, but I can fix that, it's not a problem. Um, yeah, it was very dirty under here, there was corrosion, I've cleaned it off, it's not made a difference, it still doesn't boot. So, I mean, we can keep swapping chips on this. I could swap the clock chip. I might uh, try this. This is the audio RAM, I think. Would that stop it from booting? Well, uh, technically it could do. If it does some sort of diagnostics as it's booting, it might stop in its tracks at the point where something's wrong there. But I doubt it. I doubt it. I think if you've got an audio fault, it would manifest itself as uh, not sounding right or having no sound at all. I mean, the other possibility is that little IC there, or that IC there, but I have no idea what they do. So on this side here, that's the amp, I think that's the audio amp, and I think that's the video encoder. So I don't think either of those would cause it to not boot. So I'm not really getting anywhere fast with that, uh, you know, completely dead uh, board there. I'm going to have a look at this drive now. So we'll unscrew these screws on the underside here and just have to see what sort of state the uh, board is in. Because it might not be the laser, it could well be some corrosion in here that's uh, causing the problem. 
So shielded off, the board looks okay actually, I don't see any signs of anything got onto that. It just seems to be the shield and the shielding's protected this uh, as the shielding protected the main board as well. I mean we don't know about the top side of the board, that's a possibility. Uh, I'll see if I can dismantle this further just so we can have a look at the uh, top side of the PCB. Well this is interesting, I pulled out that flat flex, can you see some corrosion on a few of the pins there? So that might be why this isn't working actually. There are a couple of solder points there that I might need to disconnect. I'm not sure whether there's any other ribbons on the top side of the uh, PCB here because it just feels held in place. Good God, I had no idea there was this many SMD caps on this side of the board actually on these. So yeah, these, those can be a source of failure on these drives. So going back over to this board, you can see I took the connectors off here. I need to put the other connector back on, you know, the, for the uh, memory card, however it is. But uh, just re-inspecting around this, because, you know, sometimes you can miss things. And I thought, let's have a look at the, uh, and you're not going to be able to see this probably, the BGA points under the chip here. I'll put you on macro, let's see if that makes a difference. Yeah, so you're on macro, and uh, you might just be able to see the solder points there look good. But around this side, now remember the corrosion was down here on this board. Uh, and again, I'm not going to be able to get very close, I don't think. Let me just uh, see if I can point. Yeah, I've got no idea how else it's going to come out. Somewhere here, uh, sorry, somewhere here we've got like a green solder ball. I don't know whether it's going to capture from that distance. I cannot physically get the camera any nearer there. But yeah, somewhere around here we've got a, a green uh, connection. So I think I'm going to force some flux under there actually as much as I can you know I'll put some there and then sort of squeeze it in with a piece of flat card and put some more down squeeze it in try and get it under the chip uh, and then I think I'm just going to heat this up for a prolonged period of time to try and reflow it properly um, I just give that a try see what happens yeah so I've got some flux there and all I'm going to do is just try and squeeze it in like that now bear in mind some of it's gone on the top of the chip there but then we'll just do that again the idea is to try and get it under the chip as best as I can there with relation to those uh, solder balls on the edge. Yeah, I'm going to make a right mess doing this. But yeah, I think that'll do for now. Let's uh, just get the hot air on there. And I will go at this for a number of minutes. Because I think if there is a bad connection, it's just going to be on the, you know this side here, just near the edge. Technically, you know, there are much better ways of doing something like this. The ideal solution would be to completely remove it, reboil it, and refit it. I might investigate the possibility of getting a stencil for this and maybe have a go myself. I don't know. I don't even think the you know the hot air station I've got here. It's not really the sort of thing for this size of chip. Really, it's fine for small chips, but not something this large. Well, I've almost certainly found the reason why this is not working. I'll just pull this wire carefully out here. Uh, you're not going to be able to see this very well. I'll perhaps give you a macro in a minute. But the wire here that corresponds with that green pin on the other side was uh, green on this side. And I never noticed it. A single wire. I mean, look how small they are. You perhaps wouldn't notice it unless you were looking super, super close at every single um, wire on there. So, yeah, I've cleaned off the surface. It looks like it's corroded away on this side. But I think the solder ball's gone, you know, it's like even after reheating, you know, inspecting that, and I appreciate you can't really see it, it looks to me like the solder ball has just disintegrated actually. Um, so there's very few options, obviously, you know, like I say, reflowing it and, you know, reballing uh, it is the best option really, but I haven't really got the right equipment for that. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to tin up this piece of coil wire here that you can't quite see. So the end of it's uh, tinned with a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of solder. I'm going to try and push it in and heat it up from the side and see if I can get it to join the underside of where the uh, thing is there. If it makes a join, then I can just trace the wire, because you can see here the wire, the, the trace comes away from the wires here, over here somewhere. And I'll just very carefully pull it over and solder it over to where it needs to go over here on the GPU. And then we'll give it a try. Um, uh, the probability of that working slim to none I think to be fair and it may well uh, not be an, a long term enduring fix you know in terms of when it heats up you know, maybe that wire will come just detached I don't know um, the, the big trick really is whether the difficulty really is whether it will join onto the underneath of the pin there because of the corrosion yeah there's no way to join that individual uh, 
pin back up. Um, I've tried everything. The only way I'm going to be able to do it is to remove it, obviously, and reboil it. I might just remove it anyway, just to have interest. Now we know that that's definitely 100% the fault on this board. Well, there could be another fault. It could have been put into storage after it failed, and then uh, some corrosion has got under there and caused a secondary fault. But I think that's actually the fault. I think this has just been put in storage because it's a bit beaten up and scratched. Maybe the laser's not perfect on the, the optical unit that goes on here. And that was why it was put into storage. Um, yeah, I might just uh, heat this and see if we can remove it. So I'm trying to keep this video quite short. It really is just an update as to what was going on with the previous GameCube there. Now we know that it was a bad uh, point on one of the BGA connections there and it does ultimately need reballing. At least we know what the situation was with that. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is use the original purple shell here and uh, reassemble this one. You know, so I'm using the, the drive from the purple one, the motherboard from the black one which works. I'll clean up all these bits of shielding because you can see you know, there's uh, bits of corrosion on here and we'll just quickly clean it up and I'll just show you the end result so nothing particularly exciting in this video really it's just a follow up from the previous video and just showing you the sorts of faults you can get with these and you know generally if you buy two of these you'll probably be able to make one out of the two you might be really unlucky and both of them have got a faulty laser but in the next part I think I'll perhaps swap the laser on the other optical unit we'll get that working but I'll do that as a separate video so I just use a wire brush on here and I use the fiberglass pen as well and get a bit of WD-40 on there, wipe that off. You need to be careful because this is chromed. You know, you get chromium into your system if you breathe any of this in. So as I say, I'm not showing you all the cleanup work on this. I'm just literally going to fly over this and give it a quick clean. You know, clean the board as well here. Yeah, so there isn't much needed. Most of the corrosion you can see comes off with a bit of IPA. And then if you get a little bit left like that, just use a fiberglass pen. You can see that you know the gold plate of these, so that bit of corrosion just comes off super easy there on the edges. The nice thing is the shielding's done a good job of keeping the corrosion off the main board. It's a shame it didn't do a better job on the other board there, you know, where we had the uh, corrosion under the BGA uh, point on the CPU, but nevertheless, um, the shielding does quite a good job of protecting these in most cases. So I think the other thing we'll do is pull this flap off here and fit it there because that's got a spring missing and it's yellowed. It just makes sense. May as well uh, try and get this one perfect. So I think in order to do that, this just uh, clips out. Yeah, there you go. Clip it out on one side. And I think if we carefully try and clip it out on the other, there we go. Flaps out. So then we need to carefully hold the spring there. Tuck it under there. And line it back up and push those in on each side. There we go. That's it, done. So I took all the components out there, give that a quick wash. As you can see I unscrewed the fan there just so we can get access to the inside of the cavity here. Again, you could wash this in the sink, uh, but I should be able to get all this dirt off here with some cotton buds and some paper towel. Uh, and we'll use cotton buds on the blades of the fan here, get right in there and clean all that dust out. There we go, fan assembly all cleaned up. So those bits reassembled, bits of corrosion cleaned off. So I've got that piece of shielding back on there, motherboard clips back into here. Uh, now I have cleaned this down, believe it or not, you know, this is as clean as you're going to get these, unless you, I don't know, spend an incredible amount of time, but you know, I've gone over these with a fiberglass pen and then just wiped over it with WD-40, so all the corrosion is gone. Uh, there's not a lot else you can do, and as I say, I've gone over this with IPA, um, and it just looks, uh, looks awful down in this corner here, but yeah, I mean, I've got everything off the surface there, it's just kind of marked. And the way I'm doing this is with a squash cotton bud. Squash a cotton bud with the uh, pliers there. Get some IPA on it and you can get right in there. So the heatsink screws are the ones with the washers. So I'm being careful around the lens there, but I've cleaned off as much of the rust as I can. You can see it looks pretty bubbly all around this in various places, but yeah, we'll just clean around the uh, plastic parts now. Uh, and I'll clean the laser lens with the cotton bud very gently. You do have to be super gentle on these because the, uh, the, you know, the laser is so small there. You could damage the uh, servos, you know, the coils there for the focus and tracking. 
So as per other drives we've looked at in the past, both ma uh, magnetic or optical drives, um, I would you know clean up the uh, underneath here where the gears and things are and the rails, get some mollicot onto the rails and mollicot onto the gears etc, lubricate anything that needs lubricating effectively. But we'll do that in a later video when I swap out the laser on the other carriage. I've sprayed some contact cleaner to the lid switch on the back and the reset switch there, but uh, yeah we'll get the lid back on there I think. So we'll just clean the laser lens very gently there. And the game that came with the black one there, um, Wind Waker, Wind Walker is it called? I don't know, Wind Waker, it works. Um, I did take it again to get it cleaned actually, they resurfaced the disc there. But yeah, this system is working fine, sweet. So things haven't worked out too bad. You can see the uh, you know the one from the black unit here. Look how rusty this one was. This one's far worse than the other one, I think. It's interesting that they both had corrosion. Um, I just suspect that because these are not valued very highly, they just get stored in garages and attics and stuff, you know, uh, in really damp locations. But I mean, you can see the shield on that one's horrendous. But we will revisit this drive in a later video because I think this just needs uh, a new laser. And I've got some new lasers. I've just not got around to... Uh, testing them yet um, but it was also useful to be able to revisit this um, and uh, I'll see if I can point let's just see because we've got a bit better light here yeah so yeah so me not wanting to be defeated in terms of understanding of faults I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it just about here you've got a salt there's a solder ball missing you can sort of see balls all the way along um, I can't get any closer than that you might be able to see a little bit better from that angle but there is a gap yeah, trust me, there's a gap there where the solder ball has just disintegrated and it corresponds with, uh, you know, the points under here and you can see where I had to go uh, with a fine wire here trying to feed through the wire, try and get it to join onto the, the pin on the chip but I think the pin is to the left of where the wire is so it's very difficult to try that approach. You can't get under the chip there to solder so you would need to, let's say, remove it and, uh, and reball it. So here's the final result, I gave it a clean up and a bit of a polish and stuff, it's come out really well actually, the front's not even too yellowed actually compared to some of these, it's immaculate all the way around, there's no marks or anything on it really, it's, even the top there's not really scratched up. Um, the inside of the drive here was particularly dirty, you know, the plastic part, I had to spend quite a long time cleaning that up. But there was value in revisiting, uh, you know, the board that was originally inside this. At least I now know, I can sort of rest assured, I know what the fault is. The fault is that missing ball on the uh, BGA there under the CPU. I do hope you found the video interesting, please like, share and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video.